Hi, I'm Julie Tam, Managing Broker of Lynn Realty in Houston, and thank you so much for joining me again for Smarter Real Estate Weekly on Wednesdays and for another episode of my series, Building My Dream Home. If you like this episode and find it helpful after you finish watching, then please consider liking and subscribing and giving me a comment on Facebook or YouTube or even LinkedIn where I post my videos now as well. Um, anyway, so this episode, we're going to dive into all of the lighting and exciting electrical um, stuff in our new home that we are building. Um, if you you've been watching then for almost the past year since we bought our lot last April of 2021. Um, I've been taking you through the entire journey of finding the lot and going through the floor plan design and all the steps needed in order to achieve a final floor plan, not just the floor plan itself and all the different rooms and where everything is located, but even things like the soil report and the elevation certificate and the flood and, you know, all the stuff, okay, all the different documents um, related to everything needed for this property. And so we are at the point where um, we have already uh, gotten plan approvals um, from the HOA and uh, the city permit has been well underway. I'm recording this video, um, I think about a week or two in advance of me actually posting it. And so in the meantime, we may have actually already gotten the city permit. Um, but anyway, I'll definitely update you guys um, in a future episode about that. Uh, certainly the city of Houston has already come back with some changes they've requested from the builder and the builder has already submitted those. And so we're getting very close uh, to groundbreaking, uh, which again, could literally have already just happened, um, but I'll update in and post a new video of that process in the near future. So today we're going to be looking at the electrical plan. Let me go ahead and share my screen so that you can see um, the latest version of the floor plan that we finalized back in November. And um, you can take a look here. This is the front elevation of the home. One of my light bulbs in my office has burned out. It's one of those big um, fluorescent tubes. <laughs> So unfortunately, it's just a little dark um, over me today. Um, but anyway, so this is the front elevation uh, just to kind of reestablish the way that our house looks from the outside. There is some exterior lighting, of course. This video is going to really help you if you are trying to install additional lighting or you are building your own custom home or selecting lighting um, for a a home build that you're doing, whether it's semi-custom or, or whatever. Um, and so you'll get some ideas of some lighting to consider and placement of lighting and all the important things that you need to think about. So if you look at the front door here, we've actually got two gas lights. So those are not considered part of the electrical plan because they're going to be gas fixtures. Um, however, we will need to have some exterior lighting, for example, in the side yards uh, to illuminate, you know, for security purposes so that there's some lighting in case anyone were going to try to do any mischievous activity uh, there. And then, of course, some lighting at the front of the house um, to illuminate, you know, the front yard and things like that. So this electrical plan that I'm about to show you includes almost all of the lighting that we'll be installing. But when we get to that stage, we'll definitely be definitely be doing a walkthrough with the electrician um, to make any changes and any sort of final decisions on certain things. Let me see. I got to shrink my little video box a little bit more because I can't even see the whole plan that I'm trying to show you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll just go with you room by room. I'm not going to go through every single light because that will take forever. Um, but some general comments, you'll notice there is a legend over here that tells you uh, what exactly each symbol means in the different types of lighting. So we literally are looking at outlets, you know, receptacles where you plug things in both 110 volts where your normal plugs are and also 220 volts, for example, like what we would use to plug in a dryer or the um, car, electrical car, char electric car charging in the garage, for example, where tel uh, telephone and television and internet outlets are um, and different switches. So you'll have some light switches that have you know, say two little switches on the bank, um, or maybe just one switch, or you could have three or four or five or however many, and to consider where to place those switches in each room and which lights to control from which switch um, are very important considerations carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors. Um, also, if any switches are going to be dimmer switches, chimes like for the doorbell, um, and then light fixtures that you're mounting on the ceiling versus the wall versus on a mirror, you know, sconces, for example, um, hanging chandeliers or other hanging um, 
lights that don't really hang down as chandeliers, but just something that, you know, hangs down just a little bit like a ceiling mounted light fixture that sticks out versus a recessed or canned light that goes into the ceiling. Um, you've seen those before. They have an eyeball, a recessed spotlight that's really kind of outdated unless you're trying to be very Focus museum style lighting um, on artwork, for example, on the walls. And so we don't have any of those um, in our home. Exhaust fans are included in here, ceiling fans, both with and without light kits within them, fluorescent light panels, garage door opener. Um, they'll show gas outlets as well, hose bib, thermostats, um, also, you know, um, under counter lights. Uh, they call them under counter, but they're actually under the cabinets in the kitchen, uh, is where you would commonly see that. So let me go through here. We'll start at the front door. So on the front porch, uh, typically you could have recessed lighting or also a chandelier. And we've chosen to have a hanging light fixture there as well, just to add some nice visual interest. It will have to hang lower than the front door surround that we'll have, which is labeled as a stone pediment, as you can see um, up here, if you see where my mouse is. So it's gotta hang down lower so that you can actually see that. Um, and as you go in, you'll see that there is a bunch of banks, let me go in and just zoom in here, of switches on the walls. So the, all those little dollar signs here, like you've got four switches. We actually sat down, my husband and I, and analyzed everything. Okay, if we walk in to our foyer, what switch are we going to want to um, have right there and in what order, what makes sense? Is it gonna be recess light, then hanging fixture, then ceiling fan, then you know whatever else? Um, and so every room we've put pretty uniformly like that in the same order. So that way we don't have to think like, oh, which switch is going to go to the ceiling fan? Which one's going to turn on the recess light? Too much thinking. A lot of times when you buy a home that's already built and you did not have a hand in this decision making, the lighting can end up being a little confusing um, in terms of, you know, you're sitting there switching all the switches on before you figure out which switch controls which light. Okay, so we were very methodical in that. So you can see we've got uh, this right here. There's a light above. You can see all the dotted lines. Those are going from the light fixture to the specific switch that controls that light fixture. And so you really have to follow each line. It starts to get very busy. Um, up at the front here, we've got the dining room. This is actually the first time I'm showing you what the egg crate, so-called egg crate, it's really more properly referred to as box beam or coffered ceiling um, is going to look like. You see these little squares. They are symmetrical. So that way in the middle there is where the chandelier is going to hang down and then there's recess lighting around. We also wanted to make sure there's enough lighting because the worst is when you get into a room, it's actually kind of dim and then it's expensive to try to add more lighting at that point because you've got to bust through the sheetrock, add more electrical drops and then put fixtures um, and so, and, and then they also may become asymmetrical. Like let's say four recess lights wasn't enough and you wanted to add more. Well, you probably have to add five and six, not just five, for example. Um, and then you wanna make sure the spacing is correct so that the light really floods the entire room if you want the whole room to be lit pretty evenly. Um, and so we walked around our own home currently to see how many lights we had in different spaces, what the distances were between them to get a better idea of how many lights we would need for the sizes of rooms in this home. Uh, some of the rooms are bigger, some are smaller, some are similar. And so um, that was a good way to do it if you don't have like an exact science, you know, kind of method. Um, and then of course we have these lights, like I mentioned, um, on the sides of the house, on um, both sides. We didn't wanna do those floodlights that are extremely bright because they would probably shine into the neighbor's home and into their first floor windows and be a disturbance. And so um, these are just, just more simple light fixtures that are going to stick out from the side of the house and not be like really bright floodlights. Okay, going over to the study here at the front, here's a room where we have a ceiling fan and the light inside. I always like to put a light in the ceiling fan. Some builders and designers and people like to just put a ceiling fan up there with no light and just rely on the lighting around. But I have found that when you don't have a light kit in the middle, um, that it ends up being a little dimmer because this middle area is just not lit. It's dimmer than what I would prefer myself. I'd like to have the option. So we have them on different switches. So if you wanna go in and turn on only the ceiling fan light because you don't want that much light, maybe you wanna just get cozy on the window seat and just read a book. And so you just want a little bit of light and not too much, or you wanna maybe turn on a lamp that specifically lights the part of the room that you you want to be in but not lighting the entire room then maybe you would just turn on the ceiling fan light or maybe you turn on only the recess lights and not the ceiling fan light um, and so you want to have those on different switches so that you have the option of turning on more or fewer lights 
here you can see these little, it looks like equal signs. We're actually gonna have some um, lighting that's gonna be, now I'm totally blanking out on the name of this lighting. Um, it's gonna be, oh my gosh, it's not rope lighting, but it's um, a type of light that's a strip, strip lighting. That's what it is, strip lighting along the um, built-in shelves in our study there so that it can illuminate the shelves nicely. And we're planning to have them just on the top to illuminate you know, more like art pieces and things, not to eliminate every single shelf because that's going to start to get expensive. And the inside closets, typically you'll just have the recess lights uh, inside your regular closets. You might get a little fancier in the master or the primary closet. And I'll show you that a little bit later. In the powder room, this was an interesting challenge because of the spacing in here. We actually had a light plan um, that ended up having to be changed slightly. So we don't have sconce lights on the mirror flanking the sink as we originally wanted. So we just have the recess light above the sink and then we have the chandelier here. Um, and then we do have a dimmer switch for that. So if we wanna brighten, have the chandelier at the brightest versus a little bit more dim and, and creating some mood lighting. Recess lights are really a good way to very evenly light the space. It's not a very focused type of lighting, but it kind of you know floods the area more. So it's good also for hallways, um, and just random, you know, little alcoves like this one. And then of course, you know, a storage closet like the one under the stairs, you would have sort of a short hanging fixture, nothing fancy because people really aren't gonna see that. It's not necessary to spend money there. Going across the way for the butler's um, pantry is we've got a, a drop down chandelier again, because that will look nice and people will see this um, through the bar opening there. Um, and then some other lighting of note that I wanted to point out is again, um, let me see if you can see it. There's supposed to be, oh, right here, yes. These little equal sign thingies going across. Those are the under cabinet lighting um, pieces that I was mentioning. So under those upper cabinets, the little strips, if you look underneath like this, will illuminate um, the countertops nice, nicely and also the backsplash. And so we'll have those. Um, you'll also wanna watch out when you look at all the different switches and things, for example, um, let me see here, right here. Some of them, for example, are for the disposal. You'll have one to turn on the dishwasher and then some you know, for various lighting. Good to have a recess light right above the kitchen sink so that you have good lighting to work with when you're washing dishes or produce or whatever. And that's definitely a central point in the kitchen that you'll be spending a good amount of time in. Here, three pendant lights over the island. Now, some people like to have just two pendant lights, which you would evenly space them to very large ones to make a dramatic impact statement. We kind of like the idea of three that aren't quite as large and you know imposing and potentially kind of blocking the view of this back wall of kitchen you know appliances and cabinets. Um, but having three that are not tiny but more like you know medium size to large. So that's the way that we went there. And then for the breakfast, having a little hanging light fixture, not an extremely fancy chandelier, but something that's nice and fresh and happy for the breakfast, plus two more recessed lights. Now, as we go over to the family room, um, you'll have the ceiling fan there with the light. Um, and then this is an important floor plug and outlet, because sometimes you might want to have a lamp or even a, like a tabletop lamp or a floor lamp um, at a side table or next to the couch. And so you want to have a plug there where you can plug those things in. And then of course you can see where some of the outlets are um, for the fireplace. We have that same uh, strip lighting. Uh, it says LED strip lights on the top shelves of these um, built-in shelves flanking the fireplace. Before we head outside, let me just go over to the mudroom area so you can see that. Pretty basic, you know, recess lighting situation. And in the garage, so breaker box here, this is an outlet for the tankless water heater and the sprinkler system. Uh, because you have to have panels for those uh, plugged into the wall. And then um, there will be a GFI outlet here for the car lift that we're gonna put in there. And I think we've pretty much decided on just having one car lift. Originally we were thinking about two, but two really puts a lot of metal framing that then takes up a lot of space in the garage, making you know less usable space and also more difficult for you to then park your car. You have to have both cars parked exactly you know, um, onto the car lift, even on a day-to-day -day basis. Here are two LED lights and then two more here because as the garage is quite long, we didn't want to have the garage be, you know, sort of more dim. We want it nice and bright. So we have uh, two pairs there. And then of course um, at the ceiling, um, we'll have the garage opener. Actually, our plan has changed a little bit since we drew this electrical plan because we will need an extra tall 
uh, overhead garage door and then therefore the opener will actually be up on the wall somewhere around this corner up here um, and the extra tall door would accommodate a lift and so your standard um, opener that would have gone in the middle of the ceiling you know like a normal house is not that's not going to be the case 224 uh, excuse me 220 volt 40 amp outlets up here uh, good for charging electric cars i currently have one a tesla model x and then um, my husband uh, is has got a what is it called the cyber truck <laughs> on order he may change his mind and not get it after all but anyway that's the plan or even if we get a different electric car we will have that in place Okay, let's take a look at outside. So we've got a ceiling fan also with light plus recessed lights for this covered patio. Um, we also needed to make sure that there were enough electrical outlets, both outdoors to plug in things that we wanted um, and also inside the house. You have to go around your current home and see all the different um, small and large appliances, um, any sort of, again, extra lamps, um, other things, you know, you might want to plug in a space heater, you might want a towel warmer in the bathroom, just wear all the things you have currently plugged in, plus your wish list of items that you'll want to um, have plugged in in the next home so that you can make sure you have enough outlets for those and that the outlets are in places where it makes sense, where you can actually reach the cord and not, you know, be having an extension cord or something ridiculous going through your space. So with this patio, so we're actually going to be putting, having the builder install a pergola, um, a, probably a store-bought, you know, pergola or internet store-bought pergola, um, not a custom pergola, which is going to be too expensive. And so we have the word future here because essentially we would be installing the ceiling fan and lighting um, on the roof of the pergola and then, um, you know, having three sconce lights, as you can see, one, two, three, these little circles, it looks like a lollipop, boom, 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 along the outside of the back of the house, helping to light, you know, the pergola and beyond into the backyard, you know, even further. Um, we will have to um, explore landscape lighting, you know, something where it's maybe solar power to put in some of the flower beds and things. Um, we are very much animal advocates and environmentalists, so we do not want to have the type of landscape lighting that shines right up into the eyes of birds, which um, studies have shown that it will tend to blind them and then they could, you know, crash into something and, and die. And so we definitely want um, kind of bird and animal friendly lighting that maybe casts like down or at a, a different type of angle. Okay, let's take a look at the upstairs. So um, here's that chandelier right at the very top of the second floor, because this is a two story foyer. Um, this little cute balcony. Um, basically linking this bedroom suite over to this bedroom suite. Um, we'll have a recess light there. If we look at the guest bedroom suite and actually also this other um, Shay's bedroom suite, the lighting is pretty similar. The plan is basically a lighted ceiling fan in the middle of the room flanked by four recess lights um, and extra ones, for example, in an extended hallway situation like here in the closet. Um, and then in the bathroom, what we've done for this one, this is the guest bathroom, is um, a recess light over the vanity and then another recess light in the middle. We didn't want to go too fancy with it because it's just, you know, a secondary bath and you want one also over the shower here. And then, of course, this little yin yang symbol is the exhaust fan and you want that, you know, situa situated over the source of odor, which would be the toilet. <laughs> um, and then of course the utility room will also have an exhaust fan for humidity created by the washer. And um, you've got, you know, the sink here, you wanna have an outlet there. Um, you'll notice GFI outlets are going to be located in places like the garage um, and also in wet areas like the kitchen and bathroom, because basically they're designed to trip, you know, and, and for safety purposes. Um, a closet in the hallway here with another recess light plus recess lights throughout the hallway. And then we mentioned with Shay's um, suite, he's got two bedrooms, one will be a playroom. So again, that's similar kind of lighting, um, similar lighting plan as the guest uh, bath for his bath, except the difference is he'll have a little chandelier here because there's a nice big area and that'll be a nice look um, there. And then of course, a recess light over his tub shower combo. Um, and then, you know, more recess lights for the closet. Recess lights also along the stairs there. All right, let's go into the game room and then we'll finish off with the owner's suite. So in the game room, same thing, um, lighted ceiling fan with the recessed lights all around. And then um, we really analyzed the location of the outlets to make sure they were where we needed them to be and how many, because we're gonna have some various things in here like you know a TV, um, 
a place that we might need to plug in or we will need to plug in a keyboard, like a piano keyboard, one of those Yamaha um, small portable keyboards and, and things like that. So we, we have um, that all planned out. Okay, so um, this is gonna be, this is kind of an exciting lighting uh, space that we worked with, which is the uh, master suite or also known now as the primary suite or owner suite. So we actually have a chandelier up at the top. There's actually going to be a beam where you see this sort of dotted line going um, across the middle here. And so the ceiling is going to be like this. It's like a triangle ceiling. And right at the top, you're going to have that beam, like a wood beam um, going. But we're probably going to be painting the beam. I don't think we usually don't like the look of just like a wood type of look. So probably the beam will just be painted. But we haven't decided that for sure yet. We wanted sconces. As you can see, again, that little lollipop symbol with the circle and the line. Um, over each nightstand. So kind of like in the hotels, you know, where you've got your own individual sconce that we can uh, switch on and off. And um, funny enough, though, I'm noticing there's not actually dotted lines going to the, oh, yes, there are. Yeah, the little S is the individual switch right next to um, each nightstand, each sconce. And um, yeah, so we've got recess lights, you know, the four again, all around. And then in the bathroom, we'll have a chandelier here. Um, it might actually end up getting adjusted slightly farther out to be up to code and not right um, too close to the bathtub because the um, thought is that if somebody stands up from the bathtub and is able to touch the light above, then it could fall into the bathtub and electrocute them. And we'll have also sconces flanking both sinks here and here on the mirrors. And this one will have three, boom, 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 because it's a longer um, vanity. And then of course, exhaust fan outside the shower, which will have um, its own light, uh, recess light inside. You'll see one shower head here, but there's actually gonna be two shower heads that's included um, with here uh, in, in, this, um, in this plan. And then, um, you know, here's nothing too special here and another exhaust fan over the toilet with some recess lighting. Um, I do wanna mention that the windows are actually turning out to be slightly different. Um, we have placed the order for the windows. We actually have to order things um, pretty far in advance these days because um, uh, there's delays. If you've heard that with the pandemic, um, you know, factories and things, you know, lose people um, to COVID-19. People have to be quarantined, take time off. Um, and then so, you know, things get shut down and so delays happen. And so because of that, we're having to order things in advance. And one thing that we're finding quite shocking is the price increase. You know, I mentioned in a previous video of the overall price increase of our home, largely due to lumber costs and partially, you know, concrete and electrical and other random elements, but even individual things like appliances. Um, my gosh, some of these appliances like refrigerator and range and things like that have gone up by several hundred dollars you know, at a time, multiple times since just about six months ago when we first um, started looking at them. And so anyway, but, and they're also taking forever. So we're having to place the order about one year in advance. And then, but they're not actually, the vendor is not ordering them from the manufacturer just yet. They're going to try to time it to where they arrive and don't have to be held for more than a couple of months because otherwise the vendor's, you know, storage is going to fill up and then they're going to start passing the cost down to the customer, um, which you can sometimes negotiate out of paying or paying less of those holding costs per month. But um, certainly it's not something that you want to deal with if possible. If you can time it just right where they come in at about the time or a couple months in advance of when your builder needs to install them. Uh, but yes, the moral of the story is definitely order things a little bit earlier than when you would want to have them in. Um, but on some things, you don't want to order too early because they may not be in stock anymore by the time the vendor actually goes and places the order with the manufacturer or the supplier you know, what you ordered through the vendor to begin with. Um, so things are taking a bit longer. It's taking longer to get appointments with vendors to go in and look at things in their showroom and also for the vendors to reply. You know, sometimes when I've asked for estimates or could you send me an updated digital brochure based on our selections now among the things that we looked at before and they're just not replying as quickly as they used to um, before the pandemic. And so it's just kind of a new reality for the, for the time being that we're having to deal with um, and just getting used to all of these things. But definitely I am someone who's experienced in this and able to advise. I actually have clients now that are doing a custom build on your lot that I help them purchase the lot. I help them purchase their current home that they live in and now um, this lot that they're building on and help them through the entire process of negotiating the contract and getting to the signature phase. And now we'll take them through the new build process 
and eventually uh, should be selling their current home and maybe even selling one of their parents' um, homes and, and, and stuff like that. So um, anyway, point being that there are so many moving pieces and things are ever changing, especially during this pandemic, that we really have to be on top of things to, you know, um, to, to, to do everything on schedule and not take forever because if you are getting a construction loan, for example, like we are, well, lenders usually have timelines. You can't just build forever. They're not gonna just let the builder build for three years. So usually they give you about one year and they'll usually give you an extension, not, a, not an indefinite extension, but some sort of limited amount of time, for example, like six months or another reasonable time frame that's probably not more than a year, whatever the builder might need and we agree on it and then you sign off and that's your extension. And if you go past that, that's when you start getting penalized by the lender. So you really wanna make sure that you're not causing any delays so that the builder can stay on schedule, that you stay on top of things with the builder to make sure that he or she is staying on schedule um, and giving you the heads up that you need to go make the selections that you need on time so that everybody stays on track. So you don't wanna be, um, causing or allowing anyone to delay things because you ultimately are the one who will pay the price. So don't assume that anyone is doing their job and doing it on time. You need to stay on top of it as well. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, once again, please like and subscribe and reach out, comment uh, down below or send me a message and I will be happy to respond. Thank you so much and have a great week.